Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, Keeper of My Home. As promised, if you watched my uh, Summer Porch Makeover Part 2, I did say that I would give a how-to on how to um, do the runner, the porch runner that I created. Before we get started, I do want to say that some of this footage that I'm going to be inserting here is done on the day that I created the runner. I'm going to pop in every now and again to explain a little bit better because um, this video is actually an afterthought so I probably didn't get all of the information or as good a picture as um, you probably would want. So I'm going to kind of put in a few additions of me um, helping the what footage I do have out. So I'm going to start with measuring. Let me show you how I measured. Now this runner goes from one point to the other point. So it's going from one door to the other door. These doors are completely opposite each other, but they're not the same width. So I had to make adjustments for that because I wanted the runner to be even. Um, if you're off even a little bit, then starting at point A, by the time you get to point B, you're, go you're going to be way off. You may not be a lot off at point A, but by the time you get to the other end, you are going to be way off. So it's really important to get your measurements completely straight and have everything planned out so that the end result is what you're looking for. So let me show you exactly how I measured our space where each door is a different measurement. I started by figuring out minus the border. Now I'm not including this part or this part right now. I'm just including the design area, which is within this white area. That was where I started. I could figure my border out after, but I needed to know what my design area was going to be. So how I figured that was I picked an even number I measured this across and 40 covered that whole area. That was my even most number because see where 38 fell inside the doorway, 40 was the first even number that fell outside the doorway. So I went an inch and a half beyond the trim on this side and an inch and a half beyond the trim on this side. That was an even 40. So that white area the inside where my design area became 40 inches, which created 20 as my center point. Now I needed to do this same thing on the other side. I measured my doorway and found my center. Then whatever my center was didn't matter because I wanted it to be the same center as the other end. So I moved my center to 20. Okay that created my 40 inches from there to there to the inside of the design okay so that gave me 40 inches the same as the other side so it gave me three points my 20 which lined up with my center point the beginning of my 40 here and my 40 lining up with this point here Okay, so I know both doorways are going to have the same measurement. It's everything is going to be even. Then I took my tape measure. I lined it up with my mark, you know, the beginning mark here. I have my center mark and I have my other mark here. So I lined this up with the first mark. And then down here, I lined the other end up with that mark, okay? So I have the 40 here, and I have the center, and then I have my first mark there, okay? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm measuring a straight line. That's what I want. So every 10 inches, I'm going to make a mark all the way down on this ruler and then I'm going to move it over to my center mark 
and that ruler is going to go all the way across to this end to my center mark and I'm going to mark every 10 inches. Once you have gotten your measurements every 10 inches, you want to take a yardstick or something that you know is straight. I used a metal ruler and you want to connect all of those lines so that you have one straight line from one end to the other. You want to move over to the center mark and you want to do the very same thing. Line your marks up on each end, mark it every 10 inches, then take a straight edge and draw a straight line. Something that's visible to you that you're going to see. Then you're going to go to the other side, the last mark, so you have three marks, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to run your tape from this end all the way to that end right where it meets that last mark. You're going to mark every 10 inches, then take a straight edge, and you're going to draw that line. So you have three lines. Those are your guides, okay? Those are important. Don't go without doing those. I am going to say that this is for this particular rug, for this design. So that's what I'm showing you. So let's move on to the next step. Once I had my three points and my lines drawn, then I had to determine my border, okay? So how I determined that was just based on, for me, this was, this was what I based it on, was I wanted to be right at the edge of this border. So I just measured out from here to here, and it was roughly about four inches. Four was even, so that's what I went with. It lined me right up with this, which is what I wanted. So from my 40 mark over here, it was an additional four inches. My border is even on all four sides. It's four inches all the way around. So once I found this four inches, I knew that this was also going to be four inches. So I measured from my start point, which was right where the door goes, and I measured over here four inches. I marked it, marked it here, marked it a little ways down. I just marked it all the way across. And again, I took a straight edge and drew a line across. Now for this one, I could use this mark, because this was where I had marked it for 40. I could use that line and measure over four inches. Once I got that mark, I'd move down a little further, measure over four inches. Go down a little further, measure over four inches. And I did that all the way down from the line that was here, marking my 40, over four inches, all the way down. And again, I did the same thing. I took a straight edge and I connected all the way down through. So I had my line, my three lines for my 40, my start point, my center point, my end point, and then four inches over and I had another line for my border. Same on this side. That After that line, I went over four inches and I had another line for my border. Okay, that created my border. And then on that end, I did four inches as well. So you just wanna measure around, making sure that you have your border. You need all of these lines. They're all going to help you and guide you along. Without them, you are going to be lost. Your navigation is gonna be completely off. So don't skip measuring. Okay, so I have the border done on all sides, all the way around me. And then I have my center where I'm going to put these. Okay, I'm using this square because this is a perfect little square. I'm using that to put on here so that I can have the squares on each side. I'm going three squares across. So these lines are going to be my guide and I'm going to pinpoint it right on all the way. And then just trace the square.
I am going to check to see if I have a right angle. And if I have a right angle, it should, should be good. We'll see by the time I get down to the other end, each point, each center and each side should match up. That is what I'm going for. Again, I'm going to match the right angles. If you're off even an eighth of an inch, by the time I get to the other end, I'm really going to be off. So making sure everything is perfect right now is going to save me on the other end. All right. Next row. And to the left, which means I need to match this point and this point, which should give me a right angle. Whoops, moved it. Let's see if I get a right angle. So far, so good. I don't know if you caught the fact or if you can even see that I don't know if you can see. I'm not on this side where the on the outside edge. I'm not going all the way over because the border is there, so it's going to kind of not be an entire square. So I don't have to go all the way over there. Okay, let's match these points. Now what you want to do is just continue with this same thing. I'm matching all of the points. I'm matching the center point and I'm matching the two side points so that they're all going to line up perfectly. I'm always checking my angle. You want to do that to make sure that you're even because if you are off even just a little bit, you're going to be off a lot by the time you get to the other end. So measuring twice, three times, just double checking yourself. It's a really good thing because it's going to save a lot of work on the other end and that's what you want to do you want to simplify this so that it is less work for you on the other end so just be sure and take the time to check all your right angles perfection i'm not shooting for perfection but that's the end of the last stencil and that line going across there marks where the border is and look that landed perfectly right i mean look at the points the points are all perfect, so I'm really excited. For any and all of my projects, I always try to use what I have on hand. This is leftover paint. I had used this for painting our front door, and I also used it for the porch door. So it's what I have on hand. Paint is expensive. I'm not going to go out and buy more. I wanted black. This just happens to be black, so it worked out perfectly. This is an exterior paint. It's mold, mildew resistant, it's fade resistant, so it's gonna be perfect for our porch floor. I may have mentioned this a time or two, but I have never been one to use tape when I'm painting. I feel like for me, it just messes me up and I end up going way outside the lines a lot easier than if I didn't use tape. But if you prefer to tape this off, you can do that. It's not a big deal. And, you know, if that's the way you like to do it, then go ahead and do it. I just didn't with mine. I just want to share my success with you. <laughs> okay, I have the first three squares diamonds done. 
you can see where it ends there like that. It does that on both sides because that's where the border is going to go. And it'll, it'll make more sense and it'll look better once the border goes on there. And then that won't be as noticeable. But look, look how good that looks. I mean, it's just, it's centered to that door. It looks so good. Now I have to do all the rest, all the way over to the door. It's a long ways yet. Now it's time to paint the border. Now the border is just four inches, like I said, all the way around. So it's just a band around the area of the rug. This really will pull everything together and it's, it's just gonna make the diamonds, the squares all make sense, especially where the two on the outside kind of cut off a little bit. It'll just make it, unify it a little bit better, so going to get that done and then it's on to the next step. Really needs a second coat. It's not um, completely covered. So I am gonna have to second coat it, but that second coat is going to go a lot quicker than the first coat. This is our entryway floor and you can see that that is the border on the porch and that is the stencil, the other stencil that I'm using. And what I'm trying to do is bring to the porch just a few of the stencils um, from inside the house, um, a few of the designs. So let me show you a couple more. This might be hard to see because we're gonna get rain today so it's kind of overcast, a lot of overcast. I turned on the light but it's not really helping. These are, the stairs and you can see again that is the border stencil and then upstairs here in our hall again you're seeing a little bit of what I'm doing with the runner. I am just trying to pull from what I have in the house and just you know how when you paint a room you want to pull like colors or complementing colors throughout the house. Um, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to pull it all together, I guess you could say. So that's where all of those stencils and ideas came from. I do want to say that when I was designing this rug in my mind, I really didn't have anything that I was set on no set design. I knew that I wanted the squares similar to what we have upstairs in the hallway, but from there, I wasn't sure where I was going to go. So I was just kind of doing this on the fly as I went. Um, sometimes that's the way it works. I know with me, as I see it, coming to fruition, it kind of brings on more ideas and I can become a little more creative with what I'm seeing. If this is something that you want to do in your home, you can just as easily not put the stencil on here. You can just leave it the way, you know, it is with just, just the squares if you choose. You could also do different colors. You could put a different stencil on the center of these. Make it your own. Do whatever you like with however you want to do it. There's, this is more of a primitive colonial style stencil. You can make it more farmhouse and find more of a farmhouse style stencil if you'd like. There's definitely no right or wrong no matter how you do this. You could also buy a drop cloth, a canvas drop cloth from your local hardware store cut it to a size that you would like to make a rug out of, hem your outer edges, and paint on that. It'll make a beautiful floor cloth for your dining room, for your living room, for your kitchen, any room you wanna put it in. There's lots of places online that you can find now that give instructions on how to create a floor cloth. Mother Earth News is one that comes to mind. They're a really good um, resource for learning how to do a floor cloth. It's pretty much the same thing as painting 
the floor as I've shown you here there's a couple of other steps that you need to um, do as well so look that up I know that that's something that's on my wish list to do so if you'd like to do one of those instead of doing this if you don't have a floor that you can paint a floor cloth is a really great option I hope you enjoyed this little how-to on how to create your own floor cloth or um, faux runner on a wood floor. This is really an easy project depending on how complicated your design is, how simple or how complicated your design is. This was pretty easy but like I said you really need to do the prep work first because that's going to be key in getting it even all the way to the other end because I was going between two places. And also, like I said, a floor cloth is a great option if you don't have a floor that you can paint. Buy a canvas drop cloth from your local hardware and use that. They work great. I know people who have done them and they're fabulous. It's something that I've always wanted to do and someday I will and if I do I'm gonna take you along with me. I have a little update that I want to share with you. I have I have made the decision to go down to one video a week so I will not be posting twice a week for a while at least until the end of canning season. It, this is really an incredibly busy time for both my husband and I between lawn mowing and gardening so much gardening and canning season um, we're canning we're growing a lot more we're canning a lot more and so adding two videos a week every week is becoming a bit too much so at least until the end of October I'm gonna say I'll be doing one video a week. I hope you understand. Thank you for joining me today, and until next time.